Welcome to another video and for today we will be learning about the limit theorems. At the end of this lesson, the learners should have illustrated the limit theorems and applied them in solving for the limit of algebraic functions. Mastering the limit theorems is a very big help for students in solving for the limit of functions without doing the tedious process of making the table of values and illustrating the graph of the function. In this lesson, we will be learning the limit theorems and apply them in solving for the limit of algebraic functions. The first theorem is called the limit of a constant. This states that the limit of a constant is itself. If a is a constant, then the limit of a as x approaches c is equal to a. So say for example, we have the limit or we are asked to solve for the limit of 3 as x approaches 2 the answer is 3 another example the limit of 1000 as x approaches 0 is equal to 1000 another example is the limit of pi as x approaches 1 half is equal to pi since pi is considered a constant value it has a value of 3.14 16 and it is not a variable therefore the limit of pi is itself okay let's move on to another theorem and it's called the limit of an identity function this theorem states that the limit of a function f of x equals x as x approaches c is equal to c that is in symbols we have the limit of x as x approaches c equals c say for example we have the limit of x as x approaches 0 the answer is 0 another the limit of x as x approaches 1 half is equal to one half another the limit of x as x approaches three is equal to three so if you are given an identity function f of x equals x or y equals x the limit of x as x approaches c is just equivalent to the value of c okay Another theorem is called the limit of the sum and difference of two functions. This states that the limit of the sum or difference of two functions is simply the sum or difference of the limits of the individual functions. For example, we are given the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l and the limit of g of x as x approaches c equals m. Then the limit of the sum or difference of these two functions is denoted as the limit of f of x plus minus g of x as x approaches c equals l plus minus m. To illustrate this, let's have an example. If the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals 5 and the limit of g of x as x approaches c equals 3, then, if we are asked to solve for the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches c, we just need to add the limit of the individual functions. So, the limit of f of x is equal to 5. The limit of g of x is equal to 3. Since we already have the values of the individual limits, if we are asked to solve for the sum of their limits, we just need to add them. So, we have 5 plus 3 equals 8. Therefore, the limit of quantity f of x plus g of x as x approaches c is equal to 8. Another example is if we are asked to solve for the difference of the limits of these two functions. So we have here the limit of f of x minus g of x as x approaches c. Since we already have the values 5 and 3, we just have to subtract them have 5 minus 3 equals 2. Therefore, the limit of f of x minus g of x as x approaches c is equal to 2. So that is the limit of the sum and difference of two functions. 
Another limit theorem is called the limit of a linear function. This states that the limit of a linear function f of x equals m of x plus b, where m and b are any constant, we say that the limit of mx plus b as x approaches c is equal to mc plus b. What happens here is that m and b retains since they are constant values and the value of x in your function becomes c in your answer since as what we had discussed in limit theorem number two or the limit of an identity function the limit of x as x approaches c is equal to c therefore the limit of mx plus b as x approaches c is equal to mc plus b to understand this theorem let's have an example if we are asked to solve for the limit of 2x plus 3 as x approaches 3 then what we need to do is to substitute 3 to the value of x since the limit of x as x approaches c is equal to c. So we have here the constant 2 times the value of x or the value of c which is the limit of x as x approaches c so 2 times 3 plus the limit of a constant is itself so we have plus 3. 2 times 3 equals 6 plus 3 equals 9. Therefore, the limit of 2x plus 3 as x approaches 3 is equal to 9. This is simply substitution or this is one method that we have discussed in our previous video which is the substitution. Another example, if we are asked to solve for the limit of 3x minus 2 as x approaches 0, we just need to substitute 0 to the value of x. So we have 3 times 0 minus 2 equals 0 minus 2 equals negative 2. Therefore, the limit of 3x minus 2 as x approaches 0 is equal to negative 2. So that is our theorem number four. Let's now move on to another theorem and that is called the limit theorem number five or the limit of the product and quotient of two functions. This states that the limit of a product or quotient of two functions is simply the product or quotient of the limits of the individual functions. In symbols, we say that if the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l, and the limit of g of x as x approaches c equals m, then the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches c is equal to the product of their individual limits l and m, so l times m. And the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches c is just equal to the quotient of the limit of the individual functions. So we have l divided by m or l over m such that the limit of the denominator should not be equal to zero in cases where the denominator is zero the limit does not exist so to understand this theorem let us have a simple example the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 6 and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to 1 third. So if we are asked to solve for the limit of the product of f of x times g of x as x approaches c, we just have to multiply their individual limits, 6 and 1 third. So we have 6 times 1 third, 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Therefore, the limit of the quantity f of x times g of x as x approaches c is equal to 2. How about the quotient of the two functions? We have the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches c equals 
the quotient of the limit of the individual functions. So we have 6 over 1 third. Now since our denominator is a fraction, we multiply our numerator to the reciprocal of the denominator. So we have 6 times the reciprocal of 1 third, which is 3 over 1. 6 times 3 is 18 divided by 1 is 18. Therefore, the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches c is equal to 18. Now, what if the individual limits are not given? So, for example, we have the limit of 5 times the quantity x plus 2 as x approaches 2. What we need to do is to identify our individual functions. So we have here 5 as our f of x and x plus 2 as our g of x. So according to limit theorem number 5, the limit of the product of two functions is just equal to the product of their individual limits. So we can have the limit of 5 as x approaches 2 times the limit of x plus 2 as x approaches 2. Now solving for the limit of the individual functions, we have here the limit of a constant. Now what do we know about the limit of a constant? According to theorem number 1, the limit of a constant is itself. So the limit of 5 as x approaches 2 is just equal to 5 times the limit of x plus 2 as x approaches 2. And this is a function in the form mx plus b, where m is equal to 1. So we can just substitute 2 to the value of x. We have 2 plus 2. The answer is 4. So 5 times 4 equals 20. Therefore, the limit of 5 times x plus 2 as x approaches 2 is equal to 20. Now, what if we use distribution before we evaluate the limit? Say, for example, in this case, we have the limit of 5 times x plus 2 as x approaches 2. What if we distribute 5 first? This will become the limit of 5x plus 10 as x approaches 2. Now if we solve for the limit of this one, this will become 5 times 2 which is 10 plus 10 equals 20. Therefore, the limit is 20, and the answer is just the same. So, whatever process you follow, as long as you make sure that your process is correct, then you will get the same answer. Now, let's move on to another limit theorem, and that is called the limit of the nth power of a function. This states that the limit of a function with power n where n is any integer, is simply the limit of the function raised to the power of n. In symbols, we have the limit of f of x raised to the power of n as x approaches c is equal to l to the n. To understand this one, let's have a simple example. What if we have the limit of 3x minus 3 squared as x approaches negative 2. What we need to do is to solve first the limit of f of x before we raise that 1 to the power n or the power 2. So solve for the fun function inside. We have 3 times negative 2 minus 3 raised to the power of 2 equals we have 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 minus 3 raised to the power of 2 equals, simplify what's inside your parenthesis, we have negative 6 minus 3 equals negative 
9. Negative 9 squared is equal to 81. Therefore, the limit of quantity 3x minus 3 squared as x approaches negative 2 is equal to 81. Another example is the limit of quantity x plus 3 raised to the power of negative 2 as x approaches 2. This is equal to 2 plus 3 raised to the power of negative 2. So 2 plus 3 is 5 raised to the power of negative 2. Since the exponent is a negative number, we can rewrite this one as 1 over 5 squared by the loss of exponent. Now, 1 over 5 squared is simply 1 over 25. Therefore, the limit of the quantity x plus 3 raised to the power of negative 2 as x approaches 2 is equal to 1 over 25. Now, let's move on to the last limit theorem, and that is called the limit of the nth root of a function. This states that the limit of the nth root of a function is simply the nth root of the limit of the function, provided that if n is even, the value inside the radical sign should be greater than 0. In symbols, we have the limit of the nth root of f of x as x approaches c, is equal to the nth root of L, where L is greater than 0 if n is even. For example, the limit of the fourth root of 3x plus 7 as x approaches 3. We can simply substitute 3 to the function inside our radical sign. So we have the fourth root of 3 times 3 plus 7. 3 times 3 is 9, so we have 9 plus 7. So we have fourth root of 16, and the fourth root of 16 is equal to 2. Notice that the value of our index is 4, which is even. And uh, the value inside the radicand is greater than 0, therefore the limit exists, and that is equal to 2. Let's have another example. The limit of the square root of 3x minus 2 as x approaches negative 3. So, since the index is 2, we have an invisible 2 here, the limit of the inside function, which is 3x minus 2, should be greater than 0, since According to theorem number 7, if your index is even, the value of your radicand should be greater than 0. Let's try to evaluate this one. We have the limit of the square root of 3x minus 2 as x approaches negative 3 is equal to the square root of 3 times negative 3 minus 2, which is equal to negative 11. Now, notice that the index is even and the radicand is negative. It is therefore impossible to solve for the limit of this function since the square root of a negative number is imaginary. Therefore, we can conclude that the limit of the square root of 3x minus 2 as x approaches negative 3, d and e. Do not write equal sign, just put D and E. So that ends our discussion about the limit theorems. I hope you have learned something in this video. So if you have questions or clarifications, just comment down. And for our next video, we'll be discussing about the infinite limits and limits at infinity. See you in the next video.